During World War II, Octagon, Switzerland had quite a few concentration camps. Were also over 1,500, 1,500 US airmen were badly treated and even murdered. They were beaten, starved, intimidated with dogs, shouts, threats, isolated into months of solitary confinement with no light, no blankets and on a starvation diet, bad hygienic conditions with lice, fleas and no medical treatment. They were shot at and killed, suffering dental deterioration because of the lack of food and this in the land of the Red Cross and the Geneva Conventions. What a scam! To which they prefer only the others will keep and obey. Convenient, isn't it? When all the others turn the other cheek, what a strategy. Uh, Switzerland's three main concentration camps were Vauvillermoos, next to Luzerne, Hunenburg and Le Diablerie, where the word Diable it means the devil. Nice, isn't it? Charming. Here I will quote some of the witness accounts of some of the American victims of Swiss organized crimes against humanity in the land of the Red Cross and Geneva Convention scams. So here's the website and here you can just click on it like uh, like here war crimes testimonies here you can read what kind of people the Swiss really are you know when there's nothing to gain like you know so they're not smiling then they show their real octagon templars face and who they really are so well if Germany would have won the war, all these thousands of Americans and other people here in Switzerland, well, they would have died. They would have gone to, no, not even to Auschwitz. You know, they have their own concentration camps here. They would have murdered them if the Germans would have won the war. That's for sure. So if you click on these here, you can read some of the uh, witness accounts of these tortured young Americans. Thousands of Americans, defenseless Americans, they were tortured in Swiss concentration camps. What a charming people, aren't they? Oh, thank God Hitler didn't win the war, eh? So I will read some excerpts of it here. Sergeant Alpert. While I was at Le Diablerie, that's a concentration camp, the guards were very sullen and if you didn't do any, everything they told you to, or if they wanted to do something, I saw them jab fellows in the back with the butt of their rifle. Quite frequently, someone would escape from the prison and then at frequent intervals during the night of the escape, the guards would come in and wake us up by prodding us with their bayonets. Next, um, Staff Sergeant Raymond Bowes from Milwaukee. Here's his testimony. I was sent without trial to Vauvilla Moos concentration camp of Switzerland for all nationalities. While prisoner in this concentration camp, Swiss did not specify length of sentence or even make an effort to bring us to trial. Throughout our entire stay in this prison, living conditions sanitary facilities etc were terrible and food was so bad and so insufficient in quantity that we appealed to the Red Cross in Geneva for food parcels. We were informed by the Red Cross through the American legation that we were not considered sufficiently in need to warrant food parcels from the Red Cross, although they made no effort whatsoever through inspections or inquiries to ascertain the conditions in this prison. The international headquarters of the Red Cross being within 100 miles of the prison and the same country. All those spending the average time in this prison suffered loss of weight, malnutrition and dental deterioration from which I'm still suffering due to improper diet and extremely low quantity of food after serving 45 days under the strictest possible discipline constantly enforced by Swiss guards and vicious dogs under conditions 
they could only be compared with German and Japanese concentration camps. We finally repatriated on February 17, 1945 and we understood that this was made possible by an agreement between the American State Department and Swiss government whereby two Germans were released for each American released by Switzerland. So here we can see, you know, Swiss is dealing for Germany, two against one, two Jerry's for one American. Now you can see what side they were on, eh? Me, Sean Ross, I recognize the same criminal Swiss mindset and Swiss behavior. They haven't changed a bit and still do it today. For political reasons, I've experienced 16 years of Swiss Nazi terror on me and my family, severe torture, beaten up by Swiss policemen and civilians, threats, and in 2002 they sent me to a forced labor camp, camp called Witzwil, which I used to call Auschwitzwil. You know, the Witzwil, the Witz, like in Auschwitz. Well, they refused me medical care because I didn't have a medical insurance, they said. So I escaped the camp and slept a week outside while walking day and night to France. Before that, they put me in a Swiss torture detention centre called Amthaus Bern, Bern, where they murdered many immigrants and political prisoners, as they did with Wolfgang Umfogel from Austria in 2010, who wanted to sell banking CDs to the US concerning tax evasion of the richest Americans who don't pay their taxes anymore and this is the actual reason of the actual shutdown in 2013 where today's Swiss Nazi banks rob the American people blind. So in this torture prison people were scratching until their skin were bleeding because of the bad hygienic conditions and some sort of bugs in the blankets. Just as what the US Airmen during the war had to experience. But even worse, in this prison in 2002, people are tort were tortured and murdered through code O2T air deprivation torture methods. And I have names and dates of people who were murdered there, which I've put into another film. So here you can see the Octagon Army of Switzerland pushing an American airplane. Oh, there's the American star there. This is what the Vauvila Mose concentration camps looks like today. And it's still a prison. They never change. They're probably doing some other experiments on people there. So here's an article of 1998 from the Independent where it says that the Swiss they had uh, slave camps like concentration camps of about 6,000 Jews and uh, probably more other people and um, well I mean the dead ones won't talk anymore you know. Uh, it was probably a present from the Germans who gave them a lot of Jews to, uh, to work for the German indu war industry in Switzerland. So inside Switzerland, they had slave labor camps like in Germany. Charming people, aren't they? So here you can read the whole story if you want. Just click on pause. Yeah, read it. But this is Switzerland, folks, and they hired it. And of course, the whole world's financial elite, they got their money stashed here. So nobody will ever do anything against this country, yeah? And then the subhumans were Jews, gypsies and American pilots. Today the subhumans in Switzerland are the immigrants, like me. And just as the Red Cross, Amnesty and Human Rights don't even look at the evidence, nor do they answer, I've sent thousands of letters and even went there personally. The Swiss know very well what they're doing and nothing has changed. It's all premeditated crime of an entire people and I've experienced the same things as those young US pilots, but 50 years later, and even worse, and over a non-stop period of 16 years of Swiss terror by these Nazis. So here you can see a picture of the Vauvilamos 
Swiss concentration camp with two Swiss um, Swiss guards. It's on a Russian website here. I found it here. And here too, a drawing of the Valvilla Mose concentration camp in Switzerland on a Russian website. I can't read the words, so I can't, I can't even contact them. Like, so I hear the name of the other concentration camp, Hunenburg. So Hune in Swiss German that means some sort of a giant, a mythical giant, who crushes humans. Nice, charming, isn't it? He has some sort of a medal with the Russian star on it and it says USA Air Force Mal Camp Maloney. From this same thing. He has some sort of an uh, isolation box at the uh, concentration camp Hunenburg in Switzerland. It looks like it was taken, the picture just right after the war. And next, the witness account of Sergeant Giametti. The fellows at Valvilamos used to write us and ask for food and clothing. They hardly ever got anything to eat. They looked like skeletons when they got out of there. The next testimony is of First Lieutenant Long from Wisconsin. The Swiss SS Guard were handpicked for their duties at this prison camp. The American legation was paying for medical cure, care for the internees. I was told of one of, of one case, however, by another American officer who had spent quite some time at Valvilla Mos, that an American who had attempted to escape was shot and had neglected for two days afterwards before medical attention was finally given to him. Well, I experienced the same thing. They made me sick through torture and oxygen deprivation and they refused to help me see a doctor and I was locked in in there. So I escaped. The next is 1st Lieutenant Wallace Northfeld from Minneapolis, Minnesota. But when the foreign minister was down to visit us, then we got good meals. I lost 40 pounds. At different times we tried to escape and they'd jump over the fence and the guards would let go with machine guns and rifles. The Russians were having a little trouble between themselves and were talking loud and making a lot of noise. They were arguing communist Russia and some other kind of Russia and the guards came in and told them to shut up and the Russians told them to shut up and the guards sized the dog on them. And one of the Russians took a board and hit the dog over the head and killed it. And then the guards immediately turned their guns on them and shot them. Most of the guards were very pro-Nazi, it seemed to me. So here's some more of the captured military. Badly treated in Switzerland. It seemed to me that the Swiss captain just carried out orders from higher ups and as soon as the American dignitaries or high ranking officers came through, such as General Leahy, everything was always just fine. We had good meals then and he promised to do this for the man and that for the man. But just as soon as they left, he'd crack the whip again. At la diablerie, diable means devil, the captain was a big heavy set man, about 6 feet tall and he weighed about 240 pounds. Two of our boys were picked up trying to escape from there and he had 25 guards guarding these two men with dogs and shot machine guns and they marched them through the town of Le Diablerie and made them the laughing stock. At Davos we were more or less placed in a German rest camp and the Germans seemed to come and go as they pleased. My opinion of the German Swiss was very pro-Nazi. And through information obtained while I was over there and through talking to different people there it was my understanding that the Swiss had 600,000 people working in the German war industries. At Valvilamos men were put 
in solitary, solitary confinement for trying to escape. And it was a little bit of a room about 10 feet by 10 feet. There were no blankets and nothing to sleep on but the cement floor. There were only a couple in the room and they were just served water and bread. No guy was in there for, one guy was in there for 25 days or so. I can't remember his name but he was an American sergeant. There were no lights in there either. He was in awful shape. I'd say if a man stayed in there for a month, there was a possibility of him coming out dead, in my opinion. The American Foreign Minister, Mr. Harrison from Zurich, saw that as well. May Sean Ross was held five months in solitary confinement in Switzerland, with hardly any air to breathe, little light, little space to move, with infested blankets and people murdered all the time in 2002 Switzerland. And I'm not even a criminal, but just a guy who criticizes the criminal syndicate of Switzerland and its people. And now they want to put me in prison again by the end of November for speaking out on YouTube. Well, these Swiss, they taught me what hatred is, Swiss hatred, how they hate other people. Uh, Lieutenant Northfeld is right about the 600,000 Swiss working for the German war industry. In fact, it has been estimated that Switzerland's war industry and criminal banking has pro prolonged World War II with at least two years. Two trainloads full with maybe 20 wagons went to Nazi Germany every day. This has been confirmed by historians as Jean Ziegler and many other historians. Most of the flak AA cannons were Swiss made like the flak 38 produced in Solothurn, Switzerland and the famous Erlikon cannons and all its ammunition produced by the Swiss. Well here it even says it was uh, yeah. it says Solothurn was made by Solothurn, Switzerland. The Swiss had a very genius system of aiming the Allied planes through a Swiss device locking the AA in at the sound waves produced by the engines of the aircraft, causing the death of many Americans by Swiss hand. So here's the Fleck 38. The precision ignition technology of the German U-boats was Swiss made, for which they got gold and other treasures back in return. My grandfather was an officer in the Royal Navy and he got torpedoed, so he died in World War II. He died with the help of the Swiss war industry. Even during the Falklands War many young British soldiers found an early death by Swiss weapons as Erlikon Skyhawk here. And the Erlikon uh, they uh, they also sold uh, ammunition to the German war industry and guns, so AA con cannons, that means anti-aircraft cannons. So here you can see the history. And uh, it says, so this is in Wikipedia, you can look it up yourself, how the uh, British soldiers, they got killed by this neutral country <laughs> very neutral killing British soldiers oh, the Swiss are clean and neutral but they're selling guns all over and even worse which I'm gonna tell you now and an estimated one million people got murdered in Darfur genocide with the help of Swiss Pilatus warplane sold to the government of Chad. The Pilatus plant is right next to the Vauvilamo Swiss concentration camp. So the Swiss just say to themselves, well that'll teach them from immigrants coming to our clean and neutral innocent Switzerland. Our octagon warplane export will stop a few more Negro refugees 
to seek for a political asylum in our clean Switzerland. Well, they stopped one million actually. They're dead and their children. So before they had the German do it for them, but the Germans won't march anymore. So the Swiss look for other ex executives. So here we can see the Pilatus uh, aircraft again over Switzerland. Switzerland is not at all a peaceful, neutral country. It's a very brutal dictatorship. And there it is again, the Pilatus. It can carry a lot of armor. It's probably faster than a Mustang uh, or, and a, or a Spitfire. Uh, it can do task, tasks, some tasks much better than a uh, than a helicopter. And um, yeah, well here we can see it again with a nice snake on it in Switzerland with some Swiss mountains behind it. It's the same airplane we just saw in Chad where they did the Darfur genocide with the help of this Swiss airplane. Uh, killing one million people. Well, it depends on what you want to do really strategically speaking that is and it's no use buying an expensive NATO helicopter or a US fighter jet if you just want to gun down some families in tents and on camels. For this the Pilatus P7 is a good option and you get 100 for the same price as for a US fighter jet you don't need the fighter jets overkill on defensive civilians anyway. So here the smart Swiss war industry of Octagon fills in the strategic gap of air power for a comparatively low cost genocide. So here's the CIA website and uh, talking about Switzerland. They got some intel on all countries. Well, and here's some about the financial uh, crime in Switzerland in the CIA uh, website. They're talking about drugs here. Well, Switzerland is the center of drugs in Europe due to the Swiss banking secret, of course. And uh, well, any means of making money for the Swiss is okay for them. Yeah. Uh, the CIA. Well, I mean, they're they're into it themselves, you know. So they should know the CIA, the Cocaine Import Agency. And of course, Mr. Hitler was financed by the Swiss and General Ulrich Wille from 1923 on in Zurich, where Rudolf Hess made the contact while studying at the Technical Science University of Zurich. See my other videos for that. And the list goes on. So here we can see Mr. Hitler in Zurich in 1923. We can see some Swiss uniforms, at least two. The guy on the left with the gun in his pocket, which we can see in my other video. These are the Swiss German partners uh, for a good business. A lot of gold, a lot of weapons exchange. So here's another official US report about the war in Switzerland, how uh, they prolonged the Second World War with years and uh, how 50% uh, of all Swiss exports went to, Ger to Nazi Germany. You know, uh, ammunition, shells, uh, weapons, Ehrlichen guns, uh, flak, the flak 38, everything. So here we can see how the Swiss masterminded the uh, the Swiss Nazi Templars, how they masterminded the whole Second World War. They're the ones behind it, I tell you. Here it shows a picture of Mr. Carroll and Mr. Pratt taking uh, two US pilots, or airmen as they used to call them at those in those times, taking pr taken prisoner in Switzerland. So next is the testimony from Sergeant Seifert from Chicago. At Vauvillamos we slept on boards and straw with one blanket to either cover with, on, with or sleep on. There were 46 men to a room which was about 30 by 100 feet. There were lice and rats in there. The, la the latrine was about a block away and it was just a slit, 
trench. At first we had access to it all the time, but afterwards they didn't let us go out after nine because the guys were escaping and they couldn't keep track of us. We didn't have any clean clothes to wear. You could wash and take a shower every two weeks or so and they turn the water on and let you get soap all over and then they'd say, that's enough. They were usually dungeons and there wasn't enough light in them. So this is a neutral country. Uh, the uh, yeah, the pilots had a far more better life in uh, in the German uh, prisoner camps for pilots. They had a very good life there. So in Nazi Germany, uh, in the Luftwaffe camps, the uh, the U.S. airmen and British pilots they were very well treated. They had food and clean. They were not tortured. They were not beaten as in neutral Switzerland, Octagon. So next is the, uh, and we don't want to know what would have happened with all these guys when, uh, when Germany would have won the war, or if Switzerland would have won the war. Yeah. So next is Sergeant Stratters, here, George Stratters, here on the picture. In Val his testimony, in Valvilla Mose, Marconi was held in solitary confinement in a damp, dirty dungeon. The place of imprisonment was infested with vermin and the left side of Marconi's body was severely chewed up by lice and other vermin that infested the place of his imprisonment. Marconi's diet consisted of a bowl of thin soup and one potato each day. This is what people got in Auschwitz, like, you know, the same. So we can see the whole idea of concentration camps in Auschwitz. It was Swiss. It was by the Swiss Nazi Templars of Octagon. They did it. And it was their idea. The Germans just ran along with it, some of them, and they were in the middle of a dictatorship. The Germans were captured in a Swiss Nazi dictatorship by the Swiss banks and Octagon. So here we can see a German Panzer, a tank, and with a Swiss cross on it. Uh, with the and in the beginning of the war, they all had this Swiss cross on it because the Nazis were financed by the Swiss, the Swiss Templars. And they were so proud of it, they they ordered them to put the Swiss cross on it. But then it went a bit differently, so they changed it. It, it, it wasn't to be won like so easily. So next is the testimony of Sergeant Swindell. One internee was on a crew that got shot up pretty, pretty badly. He'd stand up at his window all night long and scream for his mother and sister. The next night he did the same thing. He kept all the rest of us awake with his screaming. The third night he just walked right through the window he got no medical treatment and died. My normal weight is about 142 and I got down to 113. So that was in the Swiss concentration camp for one of the other American pilots. Next testimony is a left, First Lieutenant George Telford. I also saw the living conditions at Valvilla Mose and the beds are just straw with one blanket in addition to which the sanitary conditions are about the most deplorable that I have ever seen. From what I've heard, the Americans were treated about the worst of any of the others who were in interned. So in Octagon, Switzerland, the airmen were put in terrible Swiss concentration camps. They were even worse than the ones in Germany, where the British and US Flying Corps were treated after the Geneva Convention standards, quite impeccable for German standards at the time. It was even quite funny, like as, as they show in these pictures, you know. And that was because the Stalag Luft 3 for pilots were kept by the German Luftwaffe, where its head Field Marshal Hermann Göring personally saw to it that the POWs under his responsibility were treated decently with good food and proper sanitary conditions. So why is it then that the Allied pilots in the Stalag Luft 3 
were far more better off and treated after the Geneva Conventions in Nazi Germany than they, they were treated in Switzerland, a so-called neutral country where they were put in concentration camps. Well, I'll give you the answer. It's because Switzerland masterminded the war. They financed the Nazis and Adolf Hitler. They are behind the whole thing. And uh, most of the Allied and US pilots were shot down over Germany and they thought, well, they, they'd be better off in a neutral country right, with a neutral neutrality swindle. If they would have known, they should have stayed in Germany because they would have been far more better off in Germany with the, with the possibility to, to escape and, and have good food and medical treatment and everything. But they believed these lies of Swiss neutrality swindle as most of the world believes it because the Swiss have put an enormous amount of effort into their neutrality propaganda. Mr. Goering was a hero and flying ace from the First World War and a comrade of Red Baron von Richthofen. With all its chivalry and gallantry even towards enemy pilots and Goering kept this and saved the Allied pilots from Heinrich Himmler, the notorious head of the SS, who had quite some other plans with them. I think this fact should have been mentioned at the Nuremberg process. Of course it's a bit odd that he kept his first World War chivalry towards other enemy pilots and at the same time giving the order to bomb civilians in London, Coventry, Warsaw and the rest. But he did save thousands of US and English uh, pilots um, and I think they, um, uh, they should have left him a little bit of his honour. So how is it possible that this war hero who shot down uh, Lieutenant Goering who shot down uh, 22 enemy airplanes and who kept his chivalry and um, um, towards enemy pilots to the end saving them from Mr. Himmler who wanted to put them all in a Auschwitz concentration camp for being gassed to be gassed how come that this man who kept his chivalry and gallantry he changed that much well, I tell you why he became in the, under the he came under the influence of Hitler and the Nazis and who were ordered by the Swiss Nazi Templars and I don't even think that this quote here which is supposed to be by Goering that is of, from him himself if it was from him, he wouldn't have saved the, the Allied pilots from a far more worse destiny as like the Stalag Luft 3 or Kolditz. Then he would have wrecked them all. So th this is not his. Yeah, maybe he said it. But this is typical Swiss Nazi Templar stuff. And he thought, Mr. Goering thought it was the only solution. I don't think... Uh, at the Nuremberg trial, uh, they should have sentenced him, sentenced him to, to, to death. They should have kept him alive and to find out what other things he had to say, what more secrets there were. You know, but, well, the real headshed don't want these things to happen. Just as they silenced up Rudolf Hess for the rest of his life. And he certainly would have had some very interesting things for us to say just as Mr. Goering would have had. He's just a misled war hero, that's all. But the Swiss Nazi Templars, they are the real ones behind it. And I don't think we should forget how Mr. Goering saved all these young airmen, Americans and English, British and others from a far more worse uh, Destiny. He saved a lot of people. But of course I don't agree with 
bombing civilians and but this is what happened when people get indoctrinated and in this case by the Swiss Nazi Templars but the Swiss don't know any chivalry unless there's a lot of money to make somewhere and therefore no government in the world will do a thing against Switzerland because they're all on Octagon's pay list and the world's entire financial elite has got their and your money stashed in a Swiss bank or a Swiss cave in Octagon. They're all in bed with the Swiss. So this is a, a Red Cross passport of a guy called Ricardo Clement. See my film about the Nazi red line, the red line. And uh, his real name was uh, Adolf Eichmann, the guy who loved concentration camps. Well, here's the reason for that the, uh, the US airmen in the Swiss concentration camp, they were not helped by the Swiss Red Cross. Because the Swiss Red Cross was on the other side, as you can see here. And all the other war criminals, as Klaus Barbie and Josef Mengele, they all got um, in the Marktkasse in Bern, they got a Swiss Red Cross passport for the Red Line. And they all made it to South America and to Spain. So this is why in Vauvillamos the Red Cross didn't do anything. And this is the reason that there were in the first place concentration camps in so-called neutral Switzerland for US airmen and British pilots and other pilots. Because the Swiss masterminded all the concentration camps and the Nazis. The Swissies just sign all international treaties, but they won't keep any of them. It might just come in handy. And too much attention by not signing them is not good for business. The Swissies bow for the wealthy and they spit on the poor and defenseless.